Hi guys, in the upcoming videos we will be talking a lot about networking apps and how they talk to each other, including your Node.js application. So I decided to record this little video to explain how networking works in Linux and in TCP IP world. We'll talk about the network addresses, network interfaces and the tools to make sure that your application is listening on the right port and available on the right network. So let's go and explore how networks work. So servers do not work in isolation, they work in the networks and in network each and every participant needs to have an address in order to receive packets. In this example I've got a single network interface with address 188, 166, 227 and 208. This is actually the real IP address of my server on DigitalOcean. Now the interesting thing is that the server or computer is not limited to a single network interface. In fact, it may have as many network interfaces as it needs. For example, your home laptop might have two network interfaces. It might be connected to Ethernet and at the same time it might be connected to Wi-Fi. Since your server might have multiple network interfaces, naturally it can participate in multiple networks. And in every network it will have its own unique IP address. Besides those, each and every computer will have a special networking interface called a loopback interface. You can think about it as a network that only has a single computer, your own host itself. Its IP address is 127.0.0.1 and it's often aliased to localhost. In order to demonstrate how network interfaces work, I have enabled a feature on DigitalOcean called private networking. Private network is simply a network that joins all the computers, all the droplets inside of DigitalOcean data center and separates them out from the rest of the internet. You might want to use this kind of network to optimize traffic between the droplets, but the real reason why I did that for this video is to have another networking interface. So my droplet right now looks exactly like on the scheme that you see on your screen. I've got this blue network with the IP that is a real public IP over the internet and I have this little green private network with the private IP that is only visible inside of that digital ocean data center. Please notice that I only enabled this feature for demo purposes. It will be much easier to explain how network interfaces work if I have many of them. So for you, you don't have to do the same, you don't have to enable private networking on your server. So now comes the really important and interesting part. Whenever you have a networking program, it might be your Node.js application, it might be a database server, it might be Nginx, anything that listens to network is usually configured to listen to a certain networking interface. And what that means is that this program will be only able to accept connections from that network. Let's say that your application is bound to 188.166.227.28, which is Blue Network on my picture. This means that all the computers on Blue Network will have no problem connecting to your app, while the computers on the Green Network will not be able to establish connection. Even though they have a link to your host, they are able to send the packets. Since the application is listening on the different interface, they will not be able to establish a connection. And if you decide that your application will listen to 127.0.0.1 or localhost, that means that only the other applications on the same computer will have the access to your app. Effectively, this application will not be accessible to any external computer at all. There is one more special address that I want to talk about and this one is 0000. Effectively, if you choose this address as your listen target, what will happen? Your app will listen to each and every network interface that is available on this machine. It is not always a great idea to use that address for the security reason. You do not always want to expose your application to entire world. So let's go back to our server and see how it all works in practice. And before we start, I want to introduce you to several very useful command line tools that will help you to explore your network and to diagnose any issues that you might have with your application. So the first tool is very easy if config, just type it as it is, stands for interface config. And guess what? It prints the list of network interfaces together with the details about the configuration, right? So the most important parts here are the addresses. I have three network interfaces. This one is for internet. This is my public IP address. The second one, remember I mentioned private digital ocean network. So this is my second interface and the address is this one, 10.130. And the third one is a loopback address that will be present on any computer with 127.0.0.1 as its address. Next command that we will look at is called netstat. 
This little command line tool will give you loads of information about your network and command itself means network statistics. So if you just type it and hit enter, it will print you all the connections that are right now established within this host, including the Unix socket connections, including UDP, TCP, everything at all. That's not exactly what we want to see when we are working and deploying Node.js or other networking apps. Usually we are interested to see what are the open ports on this current host. And we can do that with netstat command if we add a couple of additional flags. So netstat, we add first flag T stands for TCP, we only want TCP connections. Second flag L, we are interested in listening sockets, so open ports effectively, and N means represent the IP addresses as numbers do not resolve the host name. So if you hit enter, that's something that you will see that's actual host. So uh, let's analyze this one a little bit. Firstly, you will see that I've got port 22 open, this is an SSH port and port 25, which is SMTP port networking port. Besides, I've got my 8080 port opened, which is my application that I deployed in the previous videos. And and also you can see the host that those are bound to. So 0000 means that SSH is available on each and every interface. And you'll see that port 25 is only opened on the loopback interface 127.001. So this port will not be accessible outside from this host. Besides, you see here that we've got two families of protocols and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Here we have IPv4, the usual IP addresses as you mostly see them. And here below you've got IPv4. IPv6 addresses. So netstat command in this format is very frequently used to diagnose why your application is not getting a connection, for example, right? So you type netstat and you make sure that your port is opened and indeed this is the right port that you configured and that you're trying to connect to. And also you can check if the interface is right, right? So for example, if I will bind my application to a loopback interface 127.001, it will not be accessible from outside. And with the help of netstat, it, it is very easy to check what is the interface that your app is listening to. Now let's see how to put it all in practice and specifically for this video I have created a little application on my server that will demonstrate what kind of effects will you have if you bind your app to different network interfaces, right? So obviously these concepts are not only true for Node.js, for any application they will work exactly the same way. So if you're configuring MongoDB, let's say server, and you need to make sure that it is available from the right network, you will follow the same approach, the same pattern, but instead of writing it in code, obviously you will write it somewhere in the config for MongoDB, right? So what this app does, it listens to port 8181, and secondly, it chooses the interface to listen to. This host name, is the argument that I will pass from command line. So it comes from process argv2. If there is nothing, I will just pass null, right? And null in Node.js will mean that I will listen to each and every network interface. So this way I will be able to quickly start a server on the network interface of my choice and see if it is accessible from certain points. Now to make it even more fun, I have opened four consoles to show how this application will work and each console is connecting to its own computer. So these two are connecting to our server that we're configuring. Uh, this one is my actual MacBook that will be a general computer from the intranet. So whenever I will be trying to reach from this terminal to my server, it will be like any other computer from intranet trying to reach your server. And finally, this one with DO private, this is another droplet inside of a private network of digital ocean. Now let's start. The first thing that I will do, I will start this application on 0000. So let's write note main and pass the address that we want to bind to 0000. Okay, so now it's listening. And if I bound it this way, this app should be available from everywhere. Just let's make sure that this application is actually running. So I'll create this one here. And I'll write netstat on the same server TLN. TCP IP listening sockets and numbers for ports. And here's my 8181 listening on 0000. Awesome. This is exactly what I wanted. Now let's see how it works. This app will now work from everywhere. So if I open my little cheat sheet, take public IP and I take a random computer and internet, which is my laptop in this case. And if I do this command curl and uh, I'll copy, in fact, the IP address, I need this IP 
and port 8181. What I will see, I will see a response. Hello, you came from and this is my IP address or maybe a IP address of one of the proxy servers in between. But uh, this looks valid to me, right? So the application is accessible. Will it be accessible from DigitalOcean private network? Now I will run the same command from DigitalOcean private network. But instead of using this IP, I will use the IP address of the same computer inside of DigitalOcean private network starting from 10 once. Okay, so DO private, we do curl, we pass this IP address, and IP address is not copied again. We pass this IP address and port 8181. What you will see? Yep, it still is accessible. And obviously, if you try to do the same from localhost and you do curl localhost 8181, this will again work. Now, let's do the following experiment. Now, instead of binding this thing to 0, 0, 0, 0, we will bind it to our public IP, to this one, right? So let's see what kind of results will it have. So node main and pass the IP address. This is the interface that we want to listen to. Hit enter. Now it's listening to this interface. Okay, from external network, I'm running again the same command. It is accessible. Perfect. Because I'm listening on this IP address, I'm listening on this interface, so all the internet around will have the access to this machine. Now, the interesting part goes with DigitalOcean private network. If I rerun this command, even though this machine is still accessible on this IP, so I can kind of ping it and you will see that this IP address is accessible, I don't see the app, right? I don't see the app because I'm calling it from the wrong interface. It now listens to 188.166.227.208, but I'm trying to reach it through 10.130.54.5, which is another IP address of the same host. But this DigitalOcean server also has the access to internet, so I can try another experiment. If I just replace the IP address and from this computer run this command, it will work. Awesome. Right? So you not only need to have the connectivity to the host, you also need to request it from the right network interface. Finally, from local host, if you will repeat the same experiment, you will see that you cannot connect. Again, why? Because the port is opened here. Because the port is opened for this interface. And if you do the same, curl, pass the IP address, pass 8181, you will see your response, right? So I'm now bound to a single interface and only from that interface I can connect to that application. Even if I'm coming from localhost from the same machine, I still cannot come from a loopback interface to that application. I can reach it only through this public IP address. Sure. Let's now bind to our loopback, right? So we'll start node main and 127. 001. Let's hit enter and let's double check with netstat somewhere. I had this window with netstat. Yep. Let's rerun netstat and see now that our app is listening on the loopback, right? So obviously you should know by now already, it should be quite easy now. Uh, this app will now only be accessible to local hosts. So there is no way to access this from internet. There is no way to access this from DigitalOcean private network because it is, sorry, I'm pinging instead of curling. Let me quickly fix this one. Okay, so curling to private network. Yep, here it is. So it's not being able to establish connection here, but it will be accessible from localhost. Now, a very important point here, if you're trying to access this interface, you need to make sure that you're putting the right IP address here. So if I go and do curl, localhost 8181, it will work perfectly. Everything's fine. However, I'm on the same host and I will use another IP address of the same host. So from localhost, I will do curl this IP address, port 8181. Nope, you cannot connect. So I hope that after this short demo, you understand better how this whole networking thing works and how binding to different network interfaces affect the availability of your application from the different networks and from the different computers. Now, another thing that I want to show you really quickly, what will happen if you will not pass anything to your server listen, right? So I will just type node main and it will effectively mean listen to null, right? So listening to null. Let's go to netstat and see uh, what happened, right? Let's run again netstat and we'll see that 
now we are listening to a very interesting address. So instead of 0000, we're listening to these three columns, colon, 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 81, 81. So this will be IPv6 address. IPv6 is a standard that allows you to address significantly more devices than IPv4. With Internet of Things and each little device wanting its own public IP address, it is becoming important. However, it will not be that crucial for server setup. So all you need to know is IPv6 is a different version of IP protocol and it uses colons to separate the groups of numbers. And those colons that you see here, it's actually unspecified IPv6 address. That also means that your application is listening to each and every report. You can think about it as all the zeros but in IPv6 representation. Thank you very much for watching. If you learned something new from this video, please press like and do not forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos. Bye!